Hello and welcome to Postgres FM, a weekly show about all things PostgreSQL. I'm Michael, founder of PG Mustard, and this is my co-host Nikolai, founder of Postgres AI. Hey Nikolai, what are we talking about today? Hi Michael, uh, this is uh, this topic is it's my choice this week, so I chose uh, copy how to copy the Postgres database, and uh, let's discuss various options and the pros and cons and how to improve, how like obstacles, everything and use cases of of course. Yeah, that was going to be my first question. When do you see people needing to do this most often? Right. Well, uh, since we dis- we agreed that we are going to talk about uh, Postgres questions, um, uh, having some uh, DBA uh, ops uh, experience, uh, but try- trying to explain this for um, probably wider audience for developers, uh, backend engineers, and so on. Uh, we uh, let's let's try to think about uh, use cases from this perspective of course uh, you, first of all you need to copy postgres database when you provision a new node in infrastructure and this is like less developer friendly uh, uh, area right uh, so you either want uh, to have a replica standby node logical or physical or you want to provision uh, another environment or you want to bring data to from production to non-production, and so on, many cases. But also, um, th- th- there are uh, cases when uh, we design our system and need, for example, to split uh, monolith to multiple services. So we need to think about how we will be pe- perform splitting. And when we do split, we probably need to copy all data, right? Because we like it, it's it's a very good privilege if we can start from small from uh, empty database a new service i mean usually we need to keep all data to preserve it so we need to copy uh it from old database from a monolith database or some uh, some uh, service database uh, b- becomes too too big and we see how we can split it as well so we consider it as like also kind of monolith and splitting so these are basic use cases. Uh, there are sometimes uh, cases when we need to bring data from one place to another place, and this is our routine job. And uh, of course, uh, I think every engineer should understand uh, latency and throughput and how to troubleshoot bottlenecks, how to find bottlenecks of the copy process. Right. So these are probably the basic classes of use cases. Provisioning, uh, splitting, and some kind of copying just because our application is designed so for example we need, it's also kind of provisioning right everything is provisioning but if, even if you copy database on your laptop sometimes uh, in small projects people do this and it has its own uh, pros this this approach it's also provisioning but to ju- just to your laptop right on on that note um if we start there if if we i guess we should ignore for now uh have worrying about uh, I personally identifiable information and pri- privacy and things like that. Um, what do you see on the smaller side before we get into the big larger databases on the smaller side, um, copying databases around, I've seen people have a lot of success with just simple PG dump, PG restore, uh, not even multi-threaded. And I've also seen, um, cause I don't know if we're going to talk about it again, this being a good use case for even uh, create database with template. Uh, being even possibly faster thick um, cloning right thick cloning so it's like uh, data if you have uh, 100 gigabytes uh, you clone you have 200 gigabytes used on disk yes well first of all uh, l- let's let's uh, start with logical uh, pg dump restore it's logical approach so we yep. copy data c- transforming it to sql uh, statements create table copy or individual inserts so sometimes. Uh, f- first of all, I, I would like to say that dump, PG dump, PG restore are, qu- are quite advanced, advanced programs, very advanced tools. They, ha- they have a lot of options, a lot. And uh, also formats. Uh, this plain text format and there are custom and uh, directory, so-called directory formats, uh, which uh, support parallelization and filtering uh, but this is definitely logical, uh, uh, logical level, and sometimes people think uh, the, the, a dump is a backup, for example, which is 
very um, like I, I I don't agree with that uh, it's a backup. It it kind of backup, but it's logical backup. So you um, have. Um, you can uh, run it and uh, copy it. Uh, of course, it's always thick, so because uh, again, if you load it, you consume same space again. But you will lose the bloat. If if, if you had bloat, when you dump restore, you lose it. So if, for example, so, so this there should not be surprises if a new copy takes less disk space, and if even if you took everything. Um, indexes are, are optimized, uh, they are just created, uh, PG dump put, puts them to the end of dump, so they are created after data is already loaded by PG Restore. Uh, if it's a uh, plain text uh, format, you can even load it using uh, PSQL, also an option. But uh, since I'm, I'm usually dealing with uh, quite large uh, databases, uh, dozens of terabytes, of course, uh, PG dump uh, is like for large systems, it's quite, first of all, dangerous to, if you run it in production, it will um, keep transaction open at a, a repeatable read level. It opens transaction at repeatable read levels to, to have persistent snapshot always. To, to, so it dumps tables that correlate, like there is correlation in data. So foreign keys won't be broken and so on. That's why a repeatable read snapshot is, is needed. Uh, and uh, if it, you do it quite a lot, um, of course, auto vacuum will be affected. So on large database, uh, my recommendation would be to do it on uh, not only on a standby node, but on a standby node either with uh, Hosted by, hosted by feedback off and increased uh, um, limit for transactions, uh, how, I don't remember the knob, uh, which uh, uh, controls uh, how long uh, replication, physical replication can wait until it says, okay, I cannot wait anymore and uh, kills your transaction. Or, or better, uh, I would, if you have like really large database and want, need to run a PG dump for whole database, I would say, uh, have a clone, like detach it from cluster, and then temporary clone. In cloud, it's easy, right? So you 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 create a replica, for probably from cloud snapshot, and then you you just promote it. It detached from doesn't stream uh, changes from the primary anymore. It's independent, so you can run dump there, and then you dispose it, like destroying this. And of course, uh, for throughput, single thread is not enough. We have a lot of CPUs these days usually, so I would speed it up. But for small databases, I would say less than 10 gigabytes, definitely it's okay to use a single threaded approach. Uh, 100 terabyte, 100 gigabytes terabyte, it's already time to think about parallelization. And here we come into issues with PG dump, PG restore, because you cannot use parallelization if you want to restore immediately. You, you want to restore it, on, like dump and restore on, fly, on the fly. It's possible if you have single threaded approach. So you just use pipe, you dump and restore immediately. So you don't need additional disk space. It's good. But if you need parallelization to have good throughput, and you, you probably want to have good throughput if you deal with real production nodes as well because, because you don't want auto vacuums workers to, to, to put them, like to, to interfere with their work. So probably you want to finish it earlier so you might want multiple workers so you want dump restore. But in this case you need first dump in um, uh, directory format and then restore from it. Also, PG Restore also supports parallelization, dash, dash J. So in this case, uh, this is some like disadvantage of uh, PG Dump, PG Restore. They cannot use parallelization and avoid this temporary dump, creation of this temporary dump, which is solved by third-party tools. There is a tool from uh, Dimitri Fontaine called PG Copy DB, quite new which uh, one of the benefits of which is exactly this. It can run multiple threads and dump restore on the fly. Great. So this is, this is for larger databases. But again, if you have smaller database, it's fine to, to use a single thread. And choose either you want to dump it or, or dump restore on the fly. 
right? So yeah. yeah. Before we move on from um, that, I'd also noticed that both the custom and directory formats are compressed by default, which is pretty cool. Mm. I didn't realize that. Yep. Yep. Uh, compression is there. Uh, it's good, uh, and um, of course. Uh, Compression, you probably want it uh, if uh, you have large databases. And sometimes uh, compression is significant. But um, uh, they also support filtering. Uh, directory format supports. I, I always mix custom and directory and always check documentation. But uh, one of these uh, formats support filtering, dash L, small, uh, in PG Restore tool, that we have a pair of options, dash L, uh, uppercase and lowercase. One of them is uh, showing, it allows you to see the list of uh, the content of dump. So you can see, okay, we have create table creation for this table here. We have uh, data for this table here. We have indexes, we have materialized to, we have like a refresh materialized to comment and so on. And then you can, using grep, uh, you know, like in command line, it's easy using grep, you can choose only what you want or remove what you don't want. For example, if you have hierarchy of materialized use, sometimes there is an issue with dependencies. So I remember I removed uh, the comments to refresh materialized use and just performed it separately. Otherwise, you cannot restore. So uh, uh, this is quite handy if you need partial restoration. Uh, and also worth mentioning, um, dump, uh, PG dump by default, it will produce errors but won't stop on, a, on, on an error. Oh, and wow. Yeah, it's, it's quite sometimes dangerous. You, you haven't noticed it. Restore, I don't remember, maybe the same, but in general approach, uh, as usual, I don't remember, right? But in general, you should check documentation here always. Like, what's the default behavior? Uh, and decide, do you need to stop on error or ignore errors and like to do best effort losing some objects? and then return, because uh, of course in each case it's different, uh, but uh, like in my experience, I usually want to stop. That's why default behavior for me doesn't usually work properly and I check, okay, again, we have an issue here. I would like to understand there is an issue and don't continue, so I want to stop. There is an option, of course, for, to change behavior in both uh, pitch dump and pg restore. And the docs for this are great. I'll, I'll link yeah, them up yeah, in yeah. the show notes. Reference docs are great. I would say reference doc uh, use cases, usually you want to, to find them in blog posts. Uh, yeah. More wisdom there uh, in terms of use cases. But reference is perfect, of course. And uh, dash dash help always works, right? So uh, that's actually uh, it. But one more thing, if of, of course you you can perform surgery with PG, dump PG restore, right? You can take what you want. You can combine things from different places. A lot of things can be done. Uh, but uh, of course, um, if you want, for example, default behavior to stop on error, you should understand that uh, probably you will need to start from from, from scratch again, so from from beginning, right? So, like a retry logic. You need to. You are responsible for retry logic. You need to either ignore errors or to stop on error, and then to perform this like dash l pair of dash l dash l comments and continue and, and so on. It's, so it doesn't have good retry logic itself, but it gives you some uh, options uh, as like tooling to uh, to write your scripts as you want. So this is uh, probably it uh, about pitch dump, pitch restore. One more thing interesting for developers probably, uh, this repeatable read transaction, it's interesting that you can uh, control it and uh, for example, you can open transaction yourself, uh, export snapshot and then uh, command pitch dump to use your snapshot. So you keep transaction open with snapshot already created, preventing auto vacuum to clean up freshly dead tuples as we discussed before a couple of times. And then using function uh, pg export snapshot, uh, you know the snapshot name and you can feed the snapshot name to pg dump in command line. And this is quite interesting also. And actually, I think this is how um, uh, parallelization works as well. Workers uh, know exact snapshot name and they will work uh, synchronized, synchronized, right? So they deal with the same snapshot. 
and this this allows you to design some uh, procedures to move data between places, uh, understanding that uh, you uh, your data is correlated, right? And I wish uh, uh, developers of logical uh, replication commercial tools uh, understood it better because some of them don't. For example, the tool called Click Former Attunity. Uh, I tried to explain this for one of our customers. I tried to explain to this company several times, uh, like, guys, you have issues because you export data to analytical database which doesn't have unique keys. If uh, initial copy uh, performed in a way that further CDC change data capture process, uh, sw this switch is, not, is rough, we don't understand these snapshots. It, would be, it will be duplicates, so we will have duplicates. So the trick is you open a logical replication slot, understand, uh, not using SQL, but using uh, replication connection. It's kind of a separate, very small language, uh, commons in replication connection. There you can create the same logical slot and know uh, uh, not only LSN, but also snapshot name. And then you can dump using that snapshot name. Easy. And then when you switch to CDC, uh, everything, like you don't uh, think about duplicates at all. Right, but because you cannot use, point. Yeah. yeah, but you cannot achieve this if you create logical slot using uh, select PG logical slot create, create. I don't remember. As usual, I don't. Rem I'm very bad with remembering uh, uh, function names and so on. So, and in this case, uh, it's great. And exactly like you, I think in each particular case, understanding this concept of snapshots and you can synchronize various Postgres workers uh, backends. Uh, like telling them, okay, I, I want to deal with these snapshots. It's quite powerful. Right. Yes, very cool. I was uh, reading that blog post you shared uh, from, is it Michael yeah. Packier? I'll link yeah. it up as well. Um, quite old, almost 10 years old, but uh, it's very well explaining this, uh, what I just explained, right? Yeah. Create replication slot, logical, and you know a snapshot name. And then you can pitch, even use pg dump with dash dash snapshot, and that's it. So yeah, I guess when when it comes to a point where PG dump is no longer or not not great for us, what are our other options? Well, uh, you mentioned uh, create a database template uh, in Postgres. We have this uh, very old, by the way, approach. So we have template zero, template one uh, cr created by default. Uh, it's like, a, like like reference databases, and if you want. Um, all databases uh, to have some, for example, table always, all freshly created databases, you can put something to template one. It will be used by default. But you can also say directly, explicitly say, I want a new database created based on that database. It will be thick, thick cloning, so it will create uh, copy objects uh, in regular way, like CP, right? And um, uh, of course, it will take time. By the way, we didn't discuss throughput and so on. Uh, with logical approach, uh, uh, it's worth uh, to understand that um, uh, time, you, you cannot say, okay, like one terabyte per hour. It's very hard to say because it very depends, uh, depends a lot on uh, the structure, first of all, indexes. Uh, a lot of time, so, so the logical copy if you check uh, CPU utilization, uh, disk utilization, it's not uh, evenly distributed. First, we copy data. So, so first, of course, we create uh, tables. And then we copy data, very IO intensive work. Uh, CPU is like nothing to calculate here at all. But then indexes, and this can take a lot of time. If you don't have indexes, like it's easy. But if you need to create a lot of indexes, because uh, again, logical means uh, we transforming to SQL and then back to database, right? So it's like uh, there is a uh, um, like change of uh, uh, like state here. We had physical state, we transform it to SQL, and then from SQL to physical state again. So when you need to create a lot of indexes, it's CPU intensive work, of course. Uh, maintenance work mem is worth checking, of course, all right, so maybe tuning and so on. And of course, workers, uh, like, 
when we do things, uh, we, for example, we, if it's one time, it's okay if, not, if it's not perfect. But if we know we will, pe we will be performing dump restore routinely, so we need uh, this procedure to, to be uh, optimized. First thing to remember, as I mentioned already, about the stress on production, we covered that. But then how to improve and how to troubleshoot uh, throughput. Tr troubleshooting throughput uh, here, bottlenecks is uh, usual. So like in, in Linux, we check CPU load. Of course, uh, average uh, is not enough. We need to be able to understand uh, each core. 50% on average it can be 50 each core or half of them 100% and the other half is not doing a at all anything. Because if we use dash J for PG restore, we uh, uh, we can, uh, for example, like say half of our uh, available uh, cores or we can match available cores on destination. It's it's interesting, right? So we I just sure. yeah we yeah. need to check each core, and we also need to check uh, uh, disk load, of course. Uh, first of all, throughput uh, in terms of IOPS and uh, maybe bytes per second, and uh, we we should know our limits, and and uh, understand how far from there, and so on. In in terms of rules of thumb, I saw some advice that if if you're restoring to a machine that that's all you're doing on that machine the reasonable starting point is the number of cores as exactly. the number of threads right. unlike pg dump for pg dump we, we if we do it from production node we should think about a lot we produce, especially if it's uh, the primary and uh, like the most uh, expensive uh, resource we have uh, there we, probably we should be very careful with dash j and uh, control our CPU and first and disk load definitely because we will, we are going to read a lot. By the way, interesting to understand that if our database is, for example, more than half of it is indexes, dumping indexes indexes is very easy, unlike restoring. Dumping indexes is just definition; it's like one line. Uh, and with data, yes, we we read it from disk, but indexes we don't read it, and it's it's good, right? So in terms of dumping, restoring, yes, it's CPU intensive work. You will see. Uh, many um, cores are like 100% busy. So, yeah. So if you're alone on destination node, yeah, dash J match uh, CPU. Yeah, we sometimes even do this, um, uh, either cut uh, proc CPU in four or num, num CPU. I don't remember. We just take uh, the number of cores and put it to dash J dynamically. If you if we have eight cores, okay, it will be eight workers restoring and, and so on. Going back to something you mentioned earlier, um, dumping and restoring at the same time without having to, uh, what, without needing to duplicate the data or without having to have double the space on disk. Um, what are our other options for that? Or what, what would we use? At logical instead? level, uh, well. Or even at physical, I guess, that is that when physical Physical is possible? very different. Physical yeah. level is absolutely different. And um, I like, if we talk about uh, opportunities for backend developers, of course, logical is it looks like more uh, flexible because many, many things filtering, uh, like control uh, control of uh, throughput and so on. Physical uh, at physical level in Postgres, we cannot copy one database, unfortunately. Unlike in some other systems, for example, SQL Server, we Do you mean copy the, whole the cluster. cluster. Yeah, yeah, all yeah. databases inside it, unfortunately. So sometimes it matters. Uh, there's no way to take only one database because of walls. The walls they cannot like we have single stream of walls, and uh, it's it's mixing all databases there. So we cannot take uh, only one of them. Why do we need walls? Uh, when we copy at physical level, uh, we it's it's it, it, it's it takes some time, right? And if you check throughput. Usually, I mean, not throughput. If you check resources monitoring, you will see it's quite uniform. Uh, there is no like, like, okay, we did I/O intensive work. Now we switch to CPU intensive work, like in in, in restoring uh, at logical with PG restore. Uh, at physical level, it's just taking all files and bringing them new to new place. But it takes time. And about the speed here, I would expect these days. I would say one terabyte per hour is already so so. Uh, probably, you know, like 
previously I changed I ch like I, I, I decided okay 2023 it's time to say one terabyte per hour it's not enough already it's like very moderate probably you have not uh, not modern disks right and so on probably you don't uh, uh, have good network maybe uh, it depends you also need to troubleshoot it in a normal Linux way of course uh, for troubleshooting uh, I think any engineer who thinks uh, uh, like to, who, who who wants to be uh, full stack or backend engineer uh, should uh, uh, read uh, Brandon Gregg's book books system performance and uh, and so on and uh, about and at least watch on YouTube quite old uh, two parts uh, uh, talk from Brandon Gregg about uh, tr uh, tr troubleshooting uh, performance troubleshooting methodologies. So it gives a uh, good basic understanding. So you, if your network, for example, is not good, or disks are slow on either on uh, source or destination, one terabyte per hour or even less, not good. Three terabytes what? per hour is good okay. these days. Three I was going to ask. Yeah, it's math is simple here. Uh, modern NVMe, well, mod should be at least one gigabyte per second, right, for reading and writing. Maybe two already, right? We have good already disks. Uh, and in cloud, if you take EBS volume, a Nitro system, or most modern uh, instances, EBS volume will be based on these disks. It, it should produce you. Of course, you need to pay for IOPS in cloud, right? So it's, it's expensive. But talking about big uh, systems, uh, one terabyte per hour is already so-so uh, for raw physical file copy uh, over network. Uh, so one gigabyte per second, uh, we have 3,600 seconds, 3,600 sec seconds per hour. Three, three terabytes per second we should have, right? Maybe more even. Sometimes if, we, if everything is, is well-tuned, network is good, right? Maybe more. Yeah, and of course, uh, there is no parallel uh, conflicting, uh, competing uh, workloads. Okay, uh, it, so this process takes time, and the key here is that uh, if, it, if our page data is one terabyte, ten terabytes, during this time, when we start and when we finish, it's not consistent, right? So we have inconsistent page data, data directory copied. And to fix that, we use, Postgres can use uh, checkpoint and walls to replay changes and to reach point of consistency. So if you do it manually, old school, we, we say PG start uh, backup, select PG start backup. We can do it on replica as well, which is good. And then we copy data directory, not thinking, okay, with rsync, for example, or with SCP, anything. It can feel dangerous, but it's quite reliable uh, thing. We copy with walls accumulated. In, PG wall, in the PGA wall directory, and then we say PG stop backup. Then we start Postgres in new place, and wait. We need to wait. It will take time to reach a point of consistency. This is how like physical, regular, thick cloning works. And uh, if you use uh, automation, Postgres has automation for this PG base backup. It will do basically similar thing, right? Taking walls. I remember days uh, some some years ago. Uh, by default, it, it didn't bring walls, and so many people, including myself, made mistake uh, taking uh, using PG based backup to create physical copy, and then trying to start it. But without walls, you cannot start it. It's, it's inconsistent, as I just explained. So you needed to specify dash x or something, or some like um, uh, additional. Option. But modern versions of Postgres take care of, by default, they take walls as well, uh, either like uh, uh, additional connection uh, at Postgres level or uh, using uh, file, file uh, SSH connection. So uh, PG-based backup is, is a very good tool, but very big uh, disadvantage of it. If something goes wrong, goes south, right, we need to start again. Yeah. And this is huge disadvantage. And if you provision your nodes regularly on a regular basis, for example, uh, standby nodes, if, for example, one node goes down, we need to reprovision it. it. It can be automated with Patroni, for, of course. 
it, first of all, it's stress. Uh, second disadvantage, it's stress. Uh, we need to read everything. For, disks are very busy. If we do it from the primary node on production, it's stress for primary node on production. And if we did 90% of copy and then something is wrong, some network issue or something, but it, it will restart. <laughs> and uh, more hours to spend if you have a multi-terabyte database. This disadvantage can be mitigated if you switch to different approach for physical copy. Uh, it's called uh, restore from archive. Uh, here we, we should uh, discuss backups briefly. So dump is not backup. Why? Because it's a uh, single snapshot and that's it. It g doesn't give you opportunity. Uh, it, you do it uh, and then if... So it's like once per day or something. But if a uh, problem... Of obviously, not if. Problem occurred later. And the distance between our dump and the problem, it's called, uh, in ops language, it's called uh, RPO, uh, uh, Restore Point Objective. So it, this is the amount of data you lose, right? For backups, I've it's heard, very bad, right? I hear the alternative get called point-in-time recovery quite often. Right. So, so point-in-time recovery, any modern uh, backup tool such as uh, WallG, PG Backrest, and others, they support it. And they, uh, they usually do two basic things. Full inconsistent copy of PG data. Why inconsistent? Because it takes time to copy. And second, uh, continuous stream of walls. So we archive two things. And then we restore, first of all, we restore PG data in an inconsistent state. And we take all walls we need to reach consistency and also to replay to the latest available point by default or to the point you specified uh, if you want point in time recovery. This is backup system. Dump is very, very weak backup system. PG dump, I mean, PG restore. It's flexible, it's good. In many cases, it's much better. For example, if you want to take only one database or some tables on it, of course, pitch dump is better because taking whole cluster is more expensive. So um, in this case, if you use this tool, usually data is stored in object store such as S3 or G G GCP, G uh, Google uh, storage, Cloud, yeah. Cloud storage, GCS, or others, uh, Azure blob storage, and so on. And uh, data is... is uh, 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 also, it takes care about encryption. Oh, about compression. Compression. Encryption as well, but compression. Uh, we, we, we need compression. Uh, data files in Postgres and PG data are shrink to one gigabyte, gigabyte file, files. So if you have one terabyte table, you, by the way, you shouldn't, you should have partitioning. You will see a lot of one gigabyte files in, in, in uh, the data directory, in data directory, base subdirectory, and then, then you need to navigate to using OEDs. So uh, it compressed it, compresses it, and also it also shrinks into chunks, probably, to be able to retry more politely. For example, I remember we did some work on to, uh, with WallG developers to improve how it works for Google Cloud because it, retry logic was working differently compared to S3 there. So we needed to like you don't want to re to retry when you upload, when you back up, you, want, you don't want to retry a whole file. Even if it's compressed, it takes only 300 megabytes, for example, like three times compressed. Still, retrying as a whole may be not good, so you need chunks. Uh, it's everything automated. And then uh, to join chunks on, on the cloud side, already, on, on this uh, object storage side. And, and, but it gives you opportunity to have retries both for uh, safe to, to storage and to retrieve. In this case, uh, if you use PG-based backup, as I said, you, some issue you need to restart. But uh, with WallG or PG Backrest, if you restore from archive, you d first of all, you don't put stress on any production node. And second, uh, you have retries. If it fails at 90%, maybe this is an issue with network, for example. Okay, we will wait until our cloud provider fixes this issue, and we retry from this exactly point. This is more efficient, of course, right? 
But there is pro. One big disadvantage of using these tools, uh, we should trust them. In terms of, yeah, backups also can, can have issues. Uh, for example, corruption. Well, replica nodes and standby nodes also can have corruption compared to primary. Primary can have corruption as well. Backups also can have corruption. That's why they try to improve everything. I know PGP Crest has quite strong um, work with uh, checksums and so on to verify everything and so on. So it's interesting uh, topic. But in general, if you want physical, uh, I, like by default, I wouldn't use PG-based backup if I have uh, proper archives. I would restore from archives. It's, it's also, you, you can uh, parallelize this work. Unlike PG-based backup, uh, you can say, okay, storage, uh, object storage, uh, like S3, AWS S3, it's quite good in terms of multiple workers. You can uh, suck data f like using 16 workers and you see it's good because also you have SSD and VME SSD. It's also good in terms of parallelization. You have a lot of CPUs. Use 16, core, uh, 16 workers, for example. And in this case, if you have good disks like uh, big system, you have expensive, you pay for IOPS and so on, like provisioned IOPS, uh, uh, in this case, uh, I would say try to achieve three terabytes per hour. This, this is good. And th this, uh, like, copy everything, extract uh, database from archives should be very fast. And then it's only the question how, how much it will take for Postgres to start to achieve consistency point and to replay additional walls. Right. This is actually it in terms of physical. Uh, like it's, it's, it's maybe less interesting than dump restore. <laughs> yeah. Well, it depends, right? I think that's the nice thing about this topic. It's a lot, depending on the use case, depending on exactly what you need um, at any given point, it either is useful. Yeah. You know, you know what uh, I'm wondering still? I, I, I'm wondering already several years. Uh, I think it's underappreciated the approach when instead of uh, f copying whole inconsistent PG data, we take a uh, cloud snapshot, which should take only minutes, even if you have terabyte, dozens of terabytes. Uh, and then you replay walls uh, to achieve uh, the point you need. I think it should be like if uh, WallG and PG Bequest con uh, consider themselves uh, cloud friendly, they should keep this as an option instead of copying a lot of terabytes. Why? We we can provision disk if we don't need to change file system. Of course, if we need to change file system, we cannot use a cloud snapshot. But these cloud snapshots, so in like they are quite powerful. Sometimes they are really fast. Sometimes they have stress when to create. Uh, I saw under heavy load, if you create snapshot on disk on production node, uh, at some point you have issue like uh, a couple of minutes uh, uh, latency latency spike and everything slows down so it's interesting how like it's implemented uh, uh, be, uh, under the hood but uh, uh, is definitely this a, is this on like a database as a service platform or um, no, no. It's I'm, I'm talking about regular snapshots of uh, oh, wow. network attached volumes like EBS volume or uh, 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 PD, a uh, persistent disk on GCP. It was on GCP actually, I think. Such behavior observed. Uh, and uh, sometimes I remember some people reported they could not restore from sna such snapshot. Uh, but wow. good thing about these cloud snapshots is that uh, they are incremental. They are definitely like copy on write. Uh, but of course, if you want to restore, you create another volume, you pay for this volume definitely. So if you like, for you, it looks like thick, not thin. For cloud, it's thin. They save a lot of, of course, a lot of uh, on resources on hardware. But uh, last thing, probably to touch uh, this uh, also topic uh, close to my home, uh, it's uh, if you want many snapshots and clones on, on clones on one machine, perfect for non-production development, testing, and so on. Of course, thin cloning uh, using LVM2 or ZFS. Uh, is it's it's very 
looks very good because you pay only for one disk and have many clones which for application behave as independent uh, and uh, database lab engine achieves uh, exactly this it, it automates it providing uh, CLI API and UI so for if you like it will take only a second to create snapshot it will take only a second or two to create a new clone based on that snapshot and you can have a, a powerful uh, standby node right so you, you run it using database lab engine and it uh, replaces walls for example on physical level it works with both like interesting that uh, to deal with thin cloning we needed to explore thick cloning in very detail so to, because to provision our node we also need to bring data initially and there is That's a physical and logical yeah. option and many many aspects of it how to parallelize how to like can we parallelize on the fly we cannot use using pg dump pg restore PG copy DB, we, we have plans to uh, integrate with it, uh, not, not yet, but it would be good uh, as an option. Or we can do it physically using PG backrest, Vault G from archives, and so on. Like a lot of uh, options to choose from. But then you have uh, constantly replaying walls at physical level, for example. It's like, it behaves like a replica, but uh, for your uh, environments, it looks like dozens of environments right so it's it's quite interesting yeah i think people that haven't seen it before it's pretty magical when you when you see a huge yeah. database and you can have your own isolated copy of it uh in seconds it's yeah it's great yeah thin cloning for the win thin cloning and uh, we already developed branching uh, we discussed it uh, we had an episode about branching yeah. so we have that Weslap Engine 4.0 Alpha, uh, first Alpha, we are testing it internally. Soon I will present it for a wider audience to test. And, and uh, it's quite interesting because it, it, indeed it like similar to Git. Uh, you, can, you can change, you can commit, you can have new snapshot, like commit ID with comment, and you can create new clones from there to share it with colleagues and so on. So yeah, but for for how to copy database topic, I think we covered uh, practically everything: logical, physical, uh, cloud uh, clones. Which ah okay. Also, Aurora has thin clones, right? But uh, uh, for storage, you don't pay for additional storage, but you need to pay for each instance that works with such clone. Uh, and finally, local thin clones uh, we we work with uh, like. Okay, four big classes. Nice. Yeah. So, I think that is that everything. Anything? Any last things you wanted to mention? Well, uh, test everything before you yeah. decide. <laughs> test, optimize, test, optimize. Especially these days, like uh, recently, Google Cloud increased uh, storage prices. We and of course uh, we, we like economy uh, economical situation is not perfect these days and uh, I think more people will try to optimize their costs and uh, of how you copy how uh, how you uh, use uh, resources in terms of storage first of all and also compute because if uh, cloning of one terabyte takes a day <laughs> that's not right. So I think uh, engineers, it's good to improve skills in this area, right? To understand various options and how to test, uh, how to troubleshoot, and how to make choices so your company doesn't lose money for, for nothing, right? Yeah, yeah. well said. Yep. Wonderful. Well, thanks so much. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. And catch you next week. See you next week.